All right, so I'm going to look a little bit at something called prime factorization. We're going to use factor trees to do this. I'm going to start by just thinking about what prime factorization means. Um, it's really a multiplication problem using only prime numbers to get a target number. So if you have a number you're trying to get to, what are the prime numbers that you could use to multiply to get to that? Okay, and so I'm going to give you a couple quick steps um, that we can kind of use for this. And so we're going to start right here. Our first step, so let's say our number we were asked to find the prime factorization of was 20. Um, I'm just going to write 20 right here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to think about what can we split it into if we're going to divide it into two numbers that are factors. Again, factors are things that two numbers that when multiplied will get you that number. So what two numbers could we multiply to get 20? We could think 4 and 5. And if we have 4 and 5, so 4 times 5 equals 20, those are the factors. We are not going to use 1, and I'll tell you why in a bit, but if a factor is prime, then we're going to circle it. This is my recommendation to circle it because we want to stop right there. That is a prime number, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. So we're going to stop there. Then we are going to continue factoring any composite numbers. If a number is not circled right, if it's not prime, we're saying it's composite. That means it has more than two factors. So we're now going to split this up, and so we could split this up into two and two. Now when we look at those, those are both prime numbers, so we're going to circle those. We have no numbers left, so then all you got to do at that point is list the circled numbers as a multiplication problem. I recommend using exponents at the very end, but sometimes it's useful and sometimes teachers might want you um, to just list them out. So we could simply write 20 equals 2 times 2 times 5. And that's it. That's a multiplication problem using only prime numbers that gets you to our target number. We could also write it as 2 squared times 5. Right? That means the same thing. That's the, now, the reason we don't want to use 1 is if we were to split something up. So, for instance, 20 and 1. You know, those are prime. Then we keep going. And we're still we're kind of where we came from. Right? We're not really getting smaller. So we want to use a different pair of factors other than 1 give you another example. Let's say we had the number 36. We want to split it up into two numbers. Um, we could split it up into 18 and 2. We could split it up into 9 and 4. Um, whatever numbers we use, actually, it, we're always going to end up with the same answer. So let's do 18 and 2. Circle the prime number, right? It's, and we're going to keep factoring this composite number. We could say 9 and 2. You can circle that, too keep factoring, we get 3 and 3. We no longer have anything left to factor, so now we just simply write it out as a multiplication problem. 36 equals 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Or if we use exponents, we could say 2 squared times 3 squared. All right, so that is all it is when we're finding the prime factorization. That's the multiplication problem using just prime numbers to get that. Now occasionally you'll end up with, um, you'll be given something like a problem and it will have this right here. You might have a variable in it. So if you do end up with something that has a variable, let's say we'll use a similar number that we did before. What if we had 20x squared y? We're going to treat that kind of just like the 20. We're going to break off the number and the variables into two parts. So we got 20 and then we've got x squared y. Now we're going to factor 20 just like we did before. And I'm going to show you we could actually do it in a different way. We could say 10 and 2. Circle the 2, that's prime. 2 and 5, circle those. Again, we have 2 times 2 times 5. So again, we can see whether we did 4 and 20 or 10 and 2, or sorry, 4 and 5 or 10 and 2, we still get the same numbers. If we have variables, we're just going to kind of split them up as best we can. x squared y means x squared times y. So I could split that up into x squared and y. Now I cannot factor y because I don't know what it equals, so I'm just going to circle that and say that's my endpoint. x squared we could factor into x and x, because x times x equals x squared, but I can't factor the x's anymore, so I'm going to circle those. So we don't know if they're prime, so they don't really fit this process, but it is as far as we can factor them. Then if we had to list the prime factorization for 20x squared y, we would simply list out the things. We could say 20x squared y equals 2 times 2 times 5, times x times x times y, right? And that's what we can then use. Um, then there's lots of things using the greatest common factor. Sometimes you have to use these. Sometimes you just ask to break it up, but we could do that. If we wanted to, we could also put exponents on it. But this is what the prime factorization is. That's basically as much as we can factor it 
um, with prime numbers.